Hello, Internet, and welcome to Fractal. This is Paul, and joining me as always is my good friend Dave. Hello, Paul. Hello, David. Well, as you know, Dave, DC had a real breakthrough year in 2016, putting out movies that were financially successful, but not universally loved, shall we say. Though some of us felt that uh, the movies, there was maybe a bit of a disparity between how good they could have been and how good they actually were. Yeah. But that said, we're you know heading into a new year and Wonder Woman is the next movie up. But unfortunately, this week there have been a few reports around the web. Um, we, we don't know if they're su- substantiated. We don't know how much merit there is. But unfortunately, it sounds like this Wonder Woman movie is in a bit of a mess. They've been rewriting, re-editing, whatever it is they're doing. It's not coalescing very well. So really what I wanted to say, Dave, is what's your take on all this? Let me tell you what I make of all this. Oh. All right. I make an effort in these videos to generally try to be somewhat complimentary or at least be like, hey, the DC movies are good, but here's some problems with them. But, and you know what? I mostly do that because I know, I try. I know there's people who are very passionate about DC that really love these characters and I don't want to upset them by, you know, smearing all over something they love. But here's just the honest truth. These movies are garbage. Batman v Superman was a terrible movie. Suicide Squad was not a good movie. Man of Steel was a horrible movie. These are bad movies with bad stories, unlikable characters. You do not care if the heroes succeed or fail. It, nobody's happy. Everybody's miserable. I have a hard time following what's going on, and I'm very familiar with these comic book stories. Random people off the street have no freaking clue what was going on in Batman v Superman at all. At all. It's brutally edited. The writing's terrible. And it's like everything is so gritty and dark and every ah uh, it's it drives me crazy and they're doing it again they can not learn from their mistakes they can't look at what marvel's doing and be like hey here's movies where people are having a good time and people enjoy them they go and see them and they feel good afterwards why can't you make a movie like that why does everything have to be emotionally overwrought confusing and dark Just make a damn comic book movie that's fun. How hard is that? The answer? Very, apparently. Very hard. But obviously DC had some great success with the Christopher Nolan Batman films. I mean, those did really well for them. So you can kind of understand where their head might be at, where, you know, going dark and gritty is something that they can follow. But even those, okay, and those were very dark, and which I would argue Batman is supposed to be dark. Batman's the one that gets away with it because Batman's a noir movie. Those movies had really funny parts. Michael Caine's Alfred was funny. Some of the lines that Batman and Bruce Wayne would deliver were funny. The Joker was freaking hilarious. The Dark Knight had tons of funny, funny parts. Like when he's walking away from the hospital and the explosive, you know, improvised on set. But, or even like the, you know, when he takes the Lamborghini and Alfred's, yeah, you know, yeah. all snarky, like, oh, you know, much more inconspicuous, right? <laughs> like there was funny parts in that. There were moments of joy. There were moments of tenderness, you know, and Batman triumphs over things. And, and they had simple stories that you understood. Now, you could argue about all the, like, the layers in Dark Knight, for example, and what's going on and whether morally, you know, Joker's totally wrong and Batman's totally right. But to an eight-year-old, the Joker's doing bad things. He's hurting people. He's blowing stuff up. And the Batman stops him. And you can get behind that. But still, you can understand where they're coming from. They had success with that tone before. So, um, but wouldn't you feel like if they were just copying Marvel, that, you know, there'd be a lot of criticism that that's that's all they're doing is copying Marvel? I think some people would. I think the general population would not care. Yes, snarky comic book podcasters and YouTubers like you and I Mm -hmm. would be giving them a hard time about it. But your average... 30-year-old, 25-year-old movie viewer probably couldn't care less. Okay, good point. But does that mean you're actually going to stand up for yourself or are you going to vote for your wallet? Do you mean you're not going to actually go see the new Wonder Woman film? It's, I honestly feel like I have a responsibility to see it because of this channel. And I probably will. 
I've seen worse movies. And you know what? It's, I honestly, I've always felt that it's like, it's okay to see some bad movies because that helps you appreciate the good ones. Mm-hmm. And I want just more movies. So go see it. But this, like nothing about this movie appeals to me. Okay, but unfortunately, I think it's become pretty clear that over the last three films, that unless the public comes out and votes at their wallet, they're just going to keep churning out the same kind of style of stuff they've been doing. Yeah, and they're not wrong, but I honestly feel that that is not going to continue, that there's going to come a point where people do start voting with their wallets and be like, we're not liking these movies. One of the things is they do fantastic, I'll, I'll give them this, they do fantastic jobs, uh, a fantastic job of advertising their movies. Well... I hope that Jeff Johns is the one that can, you know, maybe turn this around. I know that, you know, we have our doubts that Wonder Woman will be the one, but hopefully they can turn it around. And that to me is one thing that sort of like get somebody in. Jeff Johns is a perfect example. Get somebody in that loves these comics, that cares about these characters. I honestly think that's one thing that Marvel did. And the other thing that Marvel did that really helped them, uh, we talk about, like you mentioned, copying the Marvel, but what do you copy in Marvel? Do you copy Captain America or Iron Man or Guardians of the Galaxy? Because the feel of those three things are all very different. They have let directors give their flavor and voice to these properties, right? Like John Favreau's Iron Man is very different than James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy. It's true. I don't get the sense that DC's over there looking to hire like the strongest director with the strongest voice who can you know, turn around and make this thing their own. Well, and it's no secret that the, uh, one of the problems, a lot of the problems with Suicide Squad were because of heavy studio meddling. That they, all these executives are getting all their fingers in and being, it has to be this, it has to be this, it has to be this. This is what our metrics are telling us will be the most commercially successful thing instead of letting an artist with a vision create a story that will be good. I mean, maybe Ben Affleck will let do that. I don't know. And, you know, getting back to the money thing a little bit, while these DC movies are making good box office numbers, not nearly as good as Marvel, but good, I strongly suspect they're making far worse long-term profit than a lot of the Marvel properties. I don't know about that. I mean, Blu-ray and DVD sales, that doesn't really add up that much anymore. Are you thinking about merchandise? or Merchandise? But even streaming, like, you know, Netflix doesn't pay the same for every movie on Netflix. So what's the deal that, you know, Avengers is getting on Netflix versus what Batman v Superman Yeah, is? but Marvel's kind of getting lucky there. They kind of have got in. Everyone knows that uh, Netflix and Disney actually signed a big overarching deal recently. So Marvel's probably getting an uplift from all the other... Disney properties. I know, I'm sure Marvel's lifting all them as well. And back when they started, DVD sales were still a thing. Like, look at Man of Steel DVD sales. I don't have the numbers. Look at Man of Steel, D- sales, yeah, Man of Steel DVD sales versus whatever Marvel right. movies were back But now Marvel. without Lord of the Rings anymore, I mean, they had Harry Potter going for a while and they were starting that up again, but Warner Brothers really needs this. They don't have a lot else going for them. So, I mean, come on, Warner, don't break my heart again. There you go. So obviously Dave has some strong opinions about this, but what do you think about it? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let us know in the comments and uh, we'll discuss this further. If you liked it, please click the like button. And if you hated it, click the hate button. And if you haven't already, click subscribe so you can continue to be updated whenever Fractal puts out a new video. All right, that's all the time we have right now. Uh, Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed. I'm David. I'm Paul. And this is Fractal, signing off.